regarding yoga basically it's such a very popular phenomenon these days but it seems that there's so many kinds of yoga you have i don't know hatha yoga kundalini yoga tantric yoga power yoga bikram yoga ramdev yoga so can the true yoga please stand out yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah you see this is a word that has been if you like hijacked by a lot of elements and that's fair enough why not hinduism is such a such a majestic religion it doesn't ask for copyrights there are certain words that are endearing that create a humanity wish, wishes to embrace hinduism said take them away we are not selling copyrights you can take them away they are very magnanimous religion so the word yoga the ancient term really if you like the beginning of hinduism let me just go back on the, the theory of yoga how hinduism started at the early stages the hindu philosophy you'll be surprised was highly materialistic the nyaya vaisheshika philosophy of the hindus was highly materialistic it was atomist theory that everything is nothing but atoms and anu and parmanu these are the words they used and they were trying to explain the whole of the creation in terms of little lumps of matter and this idea was prevalent in india about 2 and 1/2 3000 years ago and we suspect i mean i'm using the word very careful we suspect democritus used to be a frequent visitor to india he was a great greek philosopher who introduced the idea of atom and the void in western physics that's how the western physics started the idea of atom and the void so reduce everything to little lumps of matter how they sit with each other what are their properties we can explain the whole creation so this idea of atomic theory basically comes out from this very ancient hindu thinking which was highly materialistic there's no room for spirit everything was explained in terms of matter anu and parmanu then we have a revolution taking place this is if you like the beginning of hinduism the real hinduism one great sage a great ancient sage of india whether he was a historic figure or just a name that you conjured up i don't know because very ancient story the name of the sage was kapil here is the first person one of the sages who was very clear thinker a deep thinker and he asked himself before i make sense of the world that i see around me all this anu and parmanu why don't i sort myself out who am i that is trying to make sense of the world because my capacity to understand is of course going to kick in to how i see the world because if i'm a dabu then my dabu vision of the world will satisfy me if i'm a real intellectual giant then i'll really dig deep into the nature of reality so let me suss myself out who the heck am i what is my capacity to understand so he want so his journey was not looking outward this was the ancient hindu philosophy looking outward he went inward to suss out his own faculties the capacity in the locus of operation of his own faculties so he looked within here if you like beginning of this is the germination of hinduism beginning of hinduism and through this is again this idea so we may think this old hindu is not hindu in the western world even the greek philosophers used to say this beautiful stuff men know thyself first before you make sense of the world why don't you sort yourself out who the heck are you what is your capacity so this is very ancient saying in the western philosophy as well as indian philosophy sort yourself out what is your capacity to understand the reality so ancient kapil looked inwards looked within and here is a marvelous story whether it's true historically i don't know but i love to think it's true historically i love this ca- this character so it turned inward he started to analyze through introspection through sitting quietly under a tree meditating through introspection he started to suss out the different layers to his being okay i have got the physical being and within the physical body that i possess there is a mental realm that i seem to kind of in, invoke and use and this is what democrit as so this is what uh, you know um, descartes discovered and this was made him very major philosopher there's more to me than matter i am the mind said descartes i think therefore i am now this is ancient thinking so here kapil started looking inwards so he said first physical body then he looked inwards and said, no no there's a mental if you like dimension that i possess which is very important because that is how i interpret the world what my mind tells me so mind has to be incorporated in my world view he didn't stop there he went deeper he said there is a determining faculty within the mind that kind of puts things into boxes oh this is kind of is round this is square this is green blue so we start put, th- putting things into boxes this is called lo- the law of induction and deduction so kapil went d- deeper he said we have it if you like this determining faculty in the mind that allows us to try and classify the world and see it in a more rational manner to get a better grasp of reality we have this rational faculty that we possess and the term we use is buddhi so it's the body the mind 
and the buddhi, the intellect that we seem to come naturally with us seems to come with the framework. You know, we don't need to get batteries for it. It's, it just kind of kicks in. So these seem to have, all human beings seem to possess these kind of different layers. But his journey didn't even stop there. Otherwise, it would have just been an intellectual gymnastics. He went one step further. And here, Hinduism started. Suddenly, this man, through this introspection, suddenly discovered, ah, oh, by the way, I am not what I am observing. I am the observer. So what I am conscious about is not what I am. I am consciousness itself. So the vision went inward until it hit the jackpot, not stopping at the body, the mind or the intellect, but at the spirit. I am the observer, not what is being observed. So everything I observe is secondary. I am the observer and alone. And this is the majesty. And this was not an intellect you think, ah, let me drink a cup of coffee and work out who I am. He actually hit the jackpot. This is the drum. I told you, spirituality only begins with first an encounter. Otherwise, it's just make-believe. It's nothing more than make-believe. You must be honest about it. So when he hit the jackpot for the first time, you know, we talk about freedom, you know, kind of natural for every human being, every living thing is searching for freedom, trying to break free from limitation. That's why we like Spider-Man. We like to break free from limitations. So this particular experience, the first thing that you get when you get this experience that you feel free, you are freed from this very limited vision you had regarding yourself. I am neither the body, the mind or the intellect. I am the spirit, perfect and pristine, as you were saying, Atman, I am that. In, in his time, the word Atman had not been devised. So the word he used was Purush, the observer. Not Purush doesn't mean man, the observer. And Prakriti, the world that we observe. So he made the division between Prakriti and this is the beginning of the yoga system. This is where the, the word becomes yoga comes from Sanskrit root yuja, joined together with my real nature. I want to discard the wrong notion I have regarding who I am and join myself with my true being, my essential nature as a spirit. This is the word, this is the true yoga, if I can use the word, from the word yuja, joined together with my real being, with my real self. Not what I think I am, but what I actually am, what I truly am. Not what I observe, but the observer. Not what I'm conscious about, but conscience itself. So this was the inward. And you can, I can tell you this. This is such a freeing experience. For the first time, death appears like nothing, fickle. Because you are no longer limited to the body or mind. You, are, you discovered who you are. This thing that never dies. That's never born. I am that. I am that. And the first thing, when you look, you know, read some of the material from Ramana Maharshi, you know, one of these modern prof prophets of Hinduism, you know, you see this man lived in the glory of the self. All his life, day and night, he could experience himself separate from the body. So this is, if you like, the beginning of this marvelous journey. So the word yuja, or the word, the, 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 if you like, the etymology of the word yoga is yuja, to join together with my real nature. Now this is the beginning of the yoga system of th thinking. But then, of course, next generation, we get Patanjali, who codified this into Ashtanga Yoga. Patanjali's Yoga Sutra becomes the central feature of turning this theory into practice. So he gave a formula saying, you follow this particular very very severe discipline, which nobody would even take on really in this day and age. He said, here is a severe discipline, I present it to you, practice it, and you will hit the same jackpot. So he codified it, and that becomes the central word, Raj Yoga, means the royal pathway of discovering your true nature. From there sprang a lot of variations. And you see, Hindu religion is pluralistic. It likes variation. It doesn't like to say, you are stuck in a rut. Only you must think like I'm telling you, otherwise you are lost. It doesn't say that. He said, no, no, you discover it your own way. You go on a scenic route. Take a bit of a bypass, you know. So the, all these various other yogas that sprang up kind of are supportive or kind of different approaches to the same idea that Patanjali presents. Patanjali Yoga Sutra is a central. And one of the things that Patanjali and all prophets have said is, look, even though you are saying you are not the body, the body is the most important tool you possess to do anything in life, including discovering spirituality. So please make sure your body is looked after well, it's healthy. So here we get this idea of Hatha Yoga, or making, a, producing a healthy body. The healthy body is the best tool you possess to make spiritual progress. So don't ignore it. You ignore it at your, uh, you know, at your, at, at, at your uh, you know, peril. You don't ignore the body. So here sprang up all this, you know, 84 asans and all this lo lovely stuff you see on TV being shown, not by Easterners, but by Westerners, doing all this world. Look, nothing wrong. Don't vilify. Some people are fixated on the body. So they just want to make the body stronger and better and healthier and not in spirit. Don't vilify them. That is their level. Leave, it, leave them there. 
they must progress from where they are. So if they think the body is the, the beginning and the end of all, it's just the body. Look out for the body so I can bite it the cherry second time, a third time. I can marry, get married three times. Even if I'm 80, I'll get married because my body is fit. Let him go for it. That's his way. This openness of the, the Hindu system allows you to progress from where you are doesn't vilify any particular level of approach. If you say, I'm just interested in hot yoga, and the Western world is only really fixated on hot yoga, because they're fixated on the body. That's why they do plastic surgery. They want to maintain, they think this is it. They are them, that's nothing more than but the body. So they'll kind of, you know, do all this kind of tweaking the knobs and, you know, ng reading the body so that jaw doesn't fall down and so on. So I'm also in kind of, you know, trying to keep my hair in place, but uh, <laughs> that's life. But this is, if you like, the idea of different levels of yoga. The Kundalini Yoga comes closest to Patanjali's ideas because it talks about actual physical movement that take place when you are successful in yoga. So that's again very close to Patanjali Yoga Sutra, but that would be the closest I would say. But there are lots of variations. And does it mean that one is right? No, no. The one that suits your temperament, that fits your requirement, that's best for you. Go for it. But progress from where you are.